how close are we um, truly to defeating HIV? It's a question that's hung over global health for, well, for decades, driving so much research. Today, we're doing a deep dive into two really groundbreaking phase one clinical trials, IAVI G002 and G003. They seem to be offering not just, you know, hope, but actual tangible progress towards an HIV vaccine. We're pulling our insights from the report IAVO HIV Vaccine Trials, Germline Targeting Breakthroughs. And our mission here is to give you a clear picture of this uh, pretty revolutionary vaccine approach, why it matters for the future, and hopefully do it without getting buried in the jargon. Okay, so let's unpack this a bit. The fundamental challenge, as I understand it, with an HIV vaccine has always been the virus itself. Its incredible ability to, well, to mutate and hide. Exactly. It's like trying to hit a moving target that's constantly changing its disguise. Makes it incredibly tough for our immune system to build a lasting defense. Right. Decades of frustration for researchers, really. Lots of dead ends. But these trials, they introduce this concept called germline targeting. It feels like a genuinely bold new strategy. Maybe a way to finally tackle that variability head on. So what exactly is germline targeting? Let's get into that. Yeah, it's a key distinction to make. Germline targeting isn't just about, you know, generally stimulating the immune system. It's much more precise. Think of it as a strategy designed to specifically guide the immune system's B cells. Okay, guide them how? Well, imagine these B cells as uh, raw recruits. They have potential, but they need very specific training. So the strategy uses these carefully designed immunogens the vaccine components acting almost like specialized trainers. Yeah. Their job is to engage very specific, quite rare, naive B cells. These are the ones that haven't seen HIV before. They're at the starting line. Ah, okay. So you're targeting the beginners, essentially. Exactly. The goal is to stimulate their maturation, mm -hmm. to teach them step by step how to create the right kind of antibodies. It's a deliberate, multi-stage education for the immune system. Okay, that makes sense. Guiding these specific B cells. So what's the ultimate prize here? What kind of antibodies are we trying to develop with this guidance and why are they so critical for HIV? Right, so connecting this back to HIV's diversity, the, the ultimate goal, the real prize, is to generate what we call broadly neutralizing antibodies yeah. or BNABs. BNABs. HIV isn't just one single thing. It's um, like a swarm of slightly different strains, always evolving, even inside one person. That's what makes it so tough. Most antibodies the body might make only recognize maybe one specific strain. Pretty useless against that sworn, right? Right, totally ineffective. But BNABs, they're different. They have this unique ability to neutralize a wide variety of HIV strains, even strains that look quite different on the surface. How do they do that? They target parts of the virus that are highly conserved, yeah. essential bits that HIV can't really change without, well, without losing its ability to infect cells. Like a master key. <laughs> yeah. Exactly like a master key. For a vaccine to work globally against all the different forms of HIV, you absolutely need BNABs. They're non-negotiable. They've been the uh, the holy grail for researchers for a long, long time. That really drives home the challenge. HIV is constant shape shifting, and <laughs> BNABs as the master key. I like that. Yeah. So this idea of coaching B cells to make these BNABs sounds great in theory, super promising. But theory is one thing. How did these trials? IAVI G002 and G003 actually put this into practice. What did they do? Right, the real test. So IAVI G002, that one was conducted in North America, a crucial first step. It used what's called a sequential immunization strategy. So participants got different vaccine components in a specific order over time. Okay, sequential. It started with a priming immunogen called EOD GT860 MER. Think of that as the initial target practice designed to wake up those specific naive B cells we talked about. Got it. The first lesson. Then that was followed by a booster immunogen, Core G28 V2 60 mer. That's like the advanced training session meant to mature and refine the response. And the 60 mer part. Ah, that just refers to their specific structure. They're designed as nanoparticles, basically, to present the viral bits effectively to the immune system. And critically, both of these were delivered using Moderna's mRNA platform. Ah, the mRNA tech, like the COVID vaccine. Exactly, which allowed for really precise and efficient delivery of the genetic instructions for these immunogens. And the key finding, it worked. It successfully engaged those target naive B cells, and uh, it elicited immune responses that really suggest we're on the right path towards generating BNABs. It proved the basic concept. Yeah. Then you have IAVI G003. This one really broadened the scope, took the research global. Okay, where did G003 take place? This trial was specifically run in South Africa and Rwanda, two countries heavily affected by HIV. 
That seems really important, doing the research where the need is greatest. Absolutely. It wasn't just logistics, it was deliberate. Mm. Vital for ensuring the research is relevant for diverse populations globally. And another really important aspect of this trial was led by African scientists and researchers. A great example of strengthening global partnerships in this field. That's fantastic. So what did G003 focus on? It focused mainly on that priming step, using the same EOD GT860 mermunogen, also delivered via mRNA. And the really significant result here, it achieved what are called VRC01 class responses in an impressive 94% of participants. VRC01 class, what does that mean? So VRC01 class antibodies are a specific type of BNAP. They're kind of a benchmark in HIV research, known for being highly potent and broad against many HIV strains. Wow, 94% is high. It's very high. Achieving that specific desirable response in such a high percentage, especially across diverse populations in Africa, provides really strong evidence that this germline targeting approach can indeed work effectively in different groups of people, which is absolutely essential for a global vaccine. It's fascinating, isn't it, that both trials leaned on Moderna's mRNA platform, a technology many of us now associate so strongly with COVID-19. We tend to think of it as, you know, a rapid response tool. But its use here seems deeper. Yeah. What does this tell us about the potential of mRNA technology beyond pandemics? That's a great point. It really highlights the versatility of mRNA. These trials show it playing a critical role in complex vaccine research, like for HIV, well beyond just rapid response. It demonstrates its adaptability, its potential to precisely deliver instructions for complex immunogens like these ones needed to guide B cells. So it's not just about speed, but also precision. Exactly. Precision in generating very specific targeted immune responses. What's compelling is that mRNA isn't just a quick fix. It's proving to be a powerful platform that could, frankly, revolutionize vaccine design for lots of diseases, especially complex ones like HIV that have historically been so challenging. It lets scientists deliver the exact genetic instructions needed. It suggests a future where vaccine design could be much more modular, maybe tailored, perhaps even faster to develop for these really tough diseases. That's the potential, yes. Yeah. A really flexible and powerful tool in the toolbox. Okay, so pulling back a bit. These trials, G002 and G003, they feel like more than just experiments. They've delivered this crucial aha moment, haven't they? Like proof that we actually can precisely coach the immune system to take on HIV's evasiveness. That feels like a big shift. It really is. A paradigm shift, as you say, it shows this targeted strategy is viable. So what are the absolute key takeaways, the main insights that really solidify this breakthrough? And, you know, being realistic, what are the next hurdles? Where do we go from these really promising but still early results? Okay, key takeaways. First, and maybe most importantly, both trials give us strong proof of concept for germline targeting itself. It's not just theory anymore. There's data showing it can guide the immune system towards those BNABs we need. Right. The concept works in humans. Second, successfully getting those VRC01 class antibodies in both trials. That's a huge step. As we said, that class is a gold standard for broad neutralization. Achieving that points very strongly towards the real possibility of developing a vaccine that induces BNABs capable of tackling diverse HIV strains globally. And third, the importance of diversity particularly with G003 focusing on African populations. That cannot be overstated. Making sure it works for everyone. Exactly. Ensuring the approach is effective in the communities most impacted by HIV. That real-world applicability focus right from the early stages is crucial for equitable solutions. Okay. And the challenges. The next the challenges. Minutes. Well, these are phase one results. Yeah. Fantastic, but early. The next steps are bigger trials, phase two and phase three. Those are needed to really assess safety in more people, figure out the optimal dosing, the schedule, and critically, efficacy. Does it actually prevent HIV infection in a much broader population? The big question. The big question. And researchers also need to keep refining the immunogen designs. Can we make the response even broader, even more potent? It's an incredibly promising start, make no mistake. But the journey definitely continues. This is genuinely exciting science, though, really pushing the boundaries of vaccine development. So bringing it back to the listener, what does this mean for you? The person trying to stay informed about prevention, about treatment options. It feels like that distant dream of an HIV vaccine just got oh, a lot more tangible, didn't it? This research seems to be laying the groundwork for a future where prevention could look very different. Absolutely. Understanding these advancements, even at this stage, is empowering. It helps you make better, more informed decisions about your own health testing, prevention options currently available, treatment if needed. How so? These vaccines aren't available yet. True. 
but knowing where the science is heading matters. These aren't just abstract experiments. They represent a huge leap in our knowledge and capability. This research could fundamentally change the HIV prevention landscape down the line. Being aware of these breakthroughs means you understand the cutting edge of science that could very well be the future. It might lead to options we can't even fully imagine right now in routine healthcare. It lets you be an informed participant in your health journey and understand the global public health efforts underway. So to quickly recap then, IAVI G0002 and G003 mark a really significant step forward. They've successfully demonstrated the proof of concept for germline targeting, and they've showcased the, uh, the immense potential of mRNA technology in this fight against HIV. That's right. These early trials have given us a clearer direction, definitely renewed hope, and they've set the stage for the next round of crucial research. But as you said, the journey continues. It does. These findings while incredibly encouraging, really underscore how important the ongoing research is. Refining the strategy, fully assessing safety, confirming efficacy, all vital. But what's fascinating here, what these early results really hint at, is a future. A future where maybe our immune systems can be precisely trained, almost like elite soldiers, to prevent one of the most persistent global health challenges we've ever faced. It potentially opens up genuinely new pathways for prevention, maybe even leading towards a world where HIV just isn't the threat it is today. That's the ultimate goal.